Guess where we're going. We're going right here. Where the birds are just about ready to pounce if I take no action. Yeah, no joke. I am situated or located somewhere where birds are um, the boss. They are the boss, guys. Not me. There's nothing I can do to stop them from doing what they're doing other than putting the net. Yep, it's that time again, every year, without fail. Thank God I don't have to do this for the oranges, for the citrus. And I don't have to do it for the <clears throat> white sapote. For some strange reason, they don't care for white sapote. But they absolutely love stone fruit. Doesn't matter what kind. Peaches, cherries, apricots, nectarines, um, plums. Yep, it's like bred into their system. <clears throat> it's an automatic dive in. Now, I've seen other YouTubers that have apricot trees and plum trees. And I've mentioned this many times. <clears throat> they don't have bird problems. It's like, do you have birds? Let's start with there. Let's start with that. Are there any birds in your neighborhood? And second question, why aren't they attacking your apricots or peaches? Third question, why are you <laughs> so fortunate not to have the problem that I've had for 20 years? 20 years I've been putting that net on the tree. Haven't, haven't skipped a year. <clears throat> so yeah. But it's not as easy as just throwing the net on the tree. I wish it was that easy. I gotta prune the tree first. And that's why we have the pruner. I gotta get rid of all that growth that's touching the power line. See that one up there? Just about touching it, not quite. But uh, this is a, a dwarf apricot which means it only grows to three meters or just over three, maybe 3.5. So right now what you're seeing is a full, full height dwarf, semi-dwarf apricot tree on dwarf rootstock. But still guys, even, even, even though it's dwarf, look how tall it is. Wow, it's a pretty tall dwarf. So what we're gonna do is bring it exactly cut in the middle to where the highest apricot is. We're going to remove two meters, almost two meters. That's all useless up there. Now that would be full of apricots too if I didn't have a bird problem like some of you guys. If I didn't have birds attacking, viciously attacking my fruit, I could get triple the amount of apricots because I wouldn't be using um, the net. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't be trimming the, the, the branches, which means I wouldn't be using a net, yeah. So, two things to do here. One, trim. Two, net. Let's get started. Ah, and now the sun's out. So, one last look in pure sunshine before I trim it. Well, semi-butcher it, actually. It's more than a trim. That's the uh, black sapote next to it. No problem with the black sapote in the birds. The reason being that you pick the black sapote when it's hard. You don't pick it when it's um, soft. And take advantage of uh, the sunshine when it's sunny to get a suntan when you're working. Shirt off. Okay, we're almost done. Yeah, this is the easy part. Taking off um, the tops.
So, the height of the tree now is there, right, around two meters, and that's where it was before. I left the center branches to show you as a reference what we're doing here. Okay, so that's 1.4, yeah, about 1.4 meters above the, well, above where we want it, above the two meter mark. Right, that's about two meters there, and another one point. Yeah, one point four. There you go. Yeah. So I'm feeling really good with the sun on my back. It's the best part of the job, actually, getting uh, energy from the sun. Best part, guys is this. I'm going to make a thumbnail. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah. That's a nice thumbnail. Wow. Right there. And we are done. Now, we put the net on. So we have some more mulch. To spread around the garden. We have a lot of mulch. That's all the uh, mulch from the camellia that I pruned last week. Remember that camellia? Look at this. Just stored and stacked, waiting for use. So the way I do it is I just throw the net over as in a ball, right? I unpack or unwind the ball on one side, then throw the ball to the other side, and it unwinds itself, right? But you've got to roll it properly for this to work. And now, I just grab this side and pull it over, and grab the other side and pull it over here. And then we tie it. That's how I do it. Don't need a second person. Don't need any um, um, tall stakes or beams. Well, for little trees, no. For a big tree, maybe. Now that we have the tricky part done, the rest is easy, guys. Right? It's a matter of getting, getting past this stage here. Then you've got all this to work with to wrap it around. Okay? Lots of... Uh, netting to play with so nothing will get in except us well that's the plan anyway so at the trunk we tie a nice big knot for um, all the excess netting to be tucked away so the the brush cutter doesn't or the lawnmower don't touch the nets and now we close up um, this end here and that end over there and we do it with pegs guys or uh, clothes pins okay almost done guys almost done look at that beautiful huh even if I say so myself beautiful and if you're using an old net, see this old net, you might have uh, holes. Double check. The birds will spend forever trying to find a way to check uh, for any mistakes. If you've made one little mistake like these little holes here, you're in big trouble, buster. Or even bigger holes like that one. Doesn't matter, small or big. They're going to say, uh-uh, dum-dum, dum-dum, <laughs> didn't check before he um, finished. So because this is an old net, and I've reused it for probably 30 times over the last um, five years, it's going to rip. Okay, it's sealed. And so is that one. Triple sealed. So um, 
The birds are not going to let you go. They're not going to give you a second chance. So go around, not once. Don't go around the, the, the tree once. Go around three times and look for any um, potential or possible um, weakness. If you find a weakness, well, congratulate yourself. If you don't find a weakness, well, you'll be a dum-dum for the birds. But that's all right. That's how you learn, right? <sighs> all right, guys, we're done. Yeah, so now we should be getting the first uh, ripe apricots uh, by next week. <clears throat> the final week of uh, December and the first two weeks of January <clears throat> yeah for three weeks at least you know what else is left to do someone's got to pick up all the mess so that adds to the exercise guys so you're getting sun uh, rays mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're getting exercise win 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 and it's all at no cost. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you from the next video. Don't forget to like, share, comment if you wish. And let me know why you are so lucky not to have pestering birds attacking your stone fruit where you live. I want to know how and why. How and why? Or why and how? Either way, I want to know. <sighs> All right. We're going to drop it right here. Oh. There you go. Just let it dry up there, then we can scatter it wherever we want around the garden. Bye guys, my exercise is done for the day.